We ended the last episode on one hell of a cliffhanger. The Hartford Whalers are going to the Stanley Cup Final for the very first time, but the question is, who will we face? The Carolina Hurricanes, which would be one hell of a storyline, or the Columbus Blue Jackets? I think you've waited long enough. Let's find out. Who is it going to be? Will it be the battle of new versus old, or will we face off against Columbus? I'm rooting for a Carolina matchup, but we'll see if that's the case. And it is! There you go. I couldn't have asked for a better matchup. Hartford against Carolina in the Stanley Cup Final. The storyline writes itself. This is going to be a ridiculous series. Now, of course, our lineup has remained completely the same. Let's take a look at what we are up against in the form of the Carolina Hurricanes. We are getting right down to business here. Let's do this. So, at this stage, they have a fairly interesting team. Top line of Jordan Eberle, who has 16 points in how many games, though, is the question? 19. Damn, 16 points in 19 games. He is centered by Victor Rask, who is a point-a-game player. And then you have Wayne Simmons trailing behind a little bit at 11 points. But still, that is a very dangerous top line. Second line, Sebastian Ajo has 15 points so far this postseason. The 10-point production there from Jordan Stahl, second line center. And Elias Lindholm, who... Oh, God, like, one of my arch nemesis, nemes, nem, nemeses, 15 points, and you know he's going to do damage. We go on to the third line, Jason Zucker with Gabriel Velarde and Tavo Teravainen. And we have the fourth line starting off with Matt Bolesky, Ryan McLeod, and Julian Gauthier. The amount of young talent they have on that team, Ajo, Velarde, McLeod, Gauthier, I mean, even Lindholm's only 27. This could be rough. And looking at the defense, it doesn't get much easier now, does it? The top pairing of Noah Hannafin and Justin Falk, who is also a point-of-game player as a defenseman. Second pairing of Jacob Slavin with Ryan Ellis. And the third pairing with uh, Hayden Flurry and Jake Bean. The goaltending, perhaps, will be the most interesting part of all... I don't know how to feel about this, guys. They have a good offense. They have a good defense. Their goaltending combos have been Booth, Ward, and Pavlik. Rust, Nicholas Waugh, and Valentin Zykov are all healthy scratches. You know what this should mean. Now, here's the thing. Booth has only played one game. He made four saves. So Booth played for a very limited amount of time, which means Andre Pavlik was their goalie. 921 save percentage through 19 games, so he must have been injured in Game 7. So they did enough to survive against Columbus, but they lost their starting goaltender in Andre Pavlik in the process. And the big question is, how long is he out for? So not only do you have the storyline of Hartford versus Carolina, but they are missing their starting goal, and he's done. He is done for the year with a sprained wrist. Pavlik is gone. Their hopes lie solely on the shoulders of Calvin Booth. And as much as I'd love to be confident that we have this in the bag, they won 55 games for a reason, and here's the thing, at least on Twitch, uh, we have seen a great team be eliminated by a 76 overall goalie. This could go either way. I genuinely don't know how this will go. I'm a little bit afraid to find out, which is why we're just going to jump right into it. Game one in Carolina. Let's see what happens. You you would assume it would go one way, but that's far from a guarantee. First period. Case in point. Aho, Bolesky, and Lindholm. Three goals on 15 shots to start this series. We're down 3 nothing. Second period. We, we battled back a bit. 
Roman Yossi and Daniel Sprong with the goals. Lindholm, though, I told you he was going to be a problem. Gets his second of the game. We are down 4-2 to two as we start the third period. So there is still potentially a comeback on the cards, especially if we get a power play goal here, which we cannot. We could easily. It's over. Jordan Stahl on the power play beats Malcolm from a pretty terrible angle. And we are going to drop game one. And that is why I said I can't really be all that confident. Make it six, Victor Rask. Their offense is legit. Their defense is legit. Their goaltending is a big-time question mark. But for that game, it was good enough, and it was better than our goaltending. Malcolm Subban kind of lets us down there as we drop game one by the score of 6-2. to two. And... I'm so tempted to make changes right off the bat, but we won't. We're going to jump right into game two, but if we lose this one, uh, rest assured changes are being made. Probably even seeing Dirksen being called up. We'll do whatever we have to do. First period of game two, and it's not as bad of a start as last time. We do give up the first goal to Jason Zucker, but thankfully Jake Gardner was able to tie it. 30-some-odd seconds later, and Lucas Liedeker gives us the goal, the goal late in the first period with 1.43 to go, and we have our first lead of this series. All right, well, let's go ahead and sim the second period and hope for the best. I think you could tell the hesitation in my voice where I'm like, all right, let's sim the second period because I, just, I have an awful feeling about this. Wayne Simmons and Jordan Stahl... Two goal, two goal second period, and as we head into the third period, Carolina's up three to two. Again, we could tie this game. We could still win this game. Not if we keep taking penalties, though. Not if we keep taking penalties. Eight and a half to go. We need a goal in a big way. Pasternak, Marner, Liedeker, Sprong, or Jordan Eberle. And Noah Hannafin gets the empty netter. And that was the worst case scenario as we drop both games on the road to start this series. Cal Booth with a 9.33 save percentage. I am going to rip my own eyes out and throw them at the screen in frustration. It is a 75 overall goalie that we just failed to beat on two different occasions. That is inexcusable, that is unacceptable, and we're not going to win if that continues. So let's go ahead, we'll take a look at the lineup, and we're going to do whatever the hell we can to try and spark this team. I had such a bad feeling, guys. I was feeling a little bit, you know, a little bit optimistic, but the second I saw Cal Booth in, uh, in goal for them, I knew we were in a little bit of trouble. And fucking hell, Liljegren, Provorov, Hansen... Like, Liljegren has really dropped the ball so far this postseason. I mean, I'm going to make major changes. I'm going to. Liljegren's going to be scratched. I'm not too happy with Hansen. I'm not too happy with Provorov either. Uh, I'm calling up Valamaki, and I'm calling up Phil Crosby. That's how we're going to approach this. And again, Liljegren is going to be scratched. So at the very least, we're going to do that. Offensively, uh, we have questions. So let's figure this out. Who's actually performing? Pasternak, decent point total. Your second line at best. I'm telling you right now, you are not playing on the first line. That's not good enough. Liedeker, not happy with you either. You know what? Here, let's sort it out. So seven points, uh, six points, and a plus two. Eleven points there. How about Radish? Nine points. So we'll drop him behind Sinitian. Tierney with nine points. Again, we'll drop him behind Sinitian. Colin Wilson, our rental, five points. Five points right now. So far in the bottom six, he is the lowest point getter. Daniel Sprong with 12 points. All right. Burakovsky has four points. Desperate times call for desperate measures, and we are going to take anybody out of this lineup who doesn't feel like trying. And Burakovsky will actually be behind Colin Wilson as the lowest uh, production guy right now. you got Pasternak there, Marner, and uh, Nolan Patrick. So 14 points there. We will actually put Pasternak in ahead of Patrick. 
And then eight points for Liedeker. Drops him to just ahead of Max Jones. So that top line deserve, you know, deserves to kind of, you know, stay together. Sorry, I'm not exactly going to be a wordsmith here. As far as who we're calling up, I mean, honestly, thinking about it, I, Colin Wilson and Burakovsky, I think, are both going to sit. So, I mean, Dirksen and Sebastian Olsen. Those are the two getting the call-up. Let's go for it. We have no choice. We have to... I mean, we got nothing to lose at this point. We got nothing to lose. Let's go for it. Let's put it, you know, let's put a team on ice that might actually decide to try. That's that's my thought process right now. Just put a team on the ice that might decide to actually friggin' try. Uh, so we will put in Olsen. And we will also put in Dirksen. So from here, trying to think of what the best team would be. I mean, we can go Radish on the right, Brown on the right. Sinitian or Sprong on the right. And Nolan Patrick. Hmm. So we do have a lot of righties. So I guess we could go Sinitian, Tierney, Sprong. And then still have uh, Marner with Pasternak and Patrick. But again, I'm not too happy with David Pasternak only having three goals. That's not enough. That is just not enough. So... So that said, I mean, because I want to really kickstart that line a little bit. I do. I do. I do. You know what? This may seem absolutely insane. And that's because it is. But we're going to go Sprong, Marner, Sinitian, Poster, Nocturne, Patrick. Third line. Uh, leader can play center, and he will, with Jones and Radish. More than, well, actually, here. You're here, here, hold on. Hold on. Because now there's the Olsen and Dirksen effect. And neither one of them are really a great center. Not that he is, either. 75 for Liedeker. 76 there. 75 there. And again, Nolan Patrick, not much of a center. So I guess it's going to have to be Dirksen at center. Hmm. So yeah, I guess that's what we're going to go for. Those are going to be the lines moving forward because we have so many underperforming players. And then on defense, Lilia Grin, you are, you are sitting for Phil Crosby. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. That leaves us with no righties. So again, we'll keep Gardner and Yossi together. Provorov continues to struggle. So he'll be down on the third pairing with Phil Crosby. And we'll have Yusuf Alamaki with Ryan McDonough. Because certain players just feel like underperforming. And in the power play lines, how screwed up are they? That's the big question right now. Uh, you got Olsen in on the power play. <laughs> Whatever. Fine by me. I'm keeping it. I don't care. I don't care. I'll give Olsen a chance. You've seen his offensive stats. He's not bad. 87 offensive awareness. Why not? Why not? Maybe he can spark the team. Just maybe. So Burakovsky, Wilson, Liljegren, Kosarenkov, Carlson, Delzato, all players, uh, Hansen as well, all players that we have given chances to, and they just haven't really gotten it done so far, have they? Um, actually, here, you know what I'm going to do? Screw it. We might as well We might as well give it a little bit of effort here, right? We might as well. Uh, so we're going to change Olsen to a left wing, and I'm also going to change him to a could go playmaker i'm gonna go two way i'm gonna go two way for olsen seems like a good idea tell me if i'm wrong by the time you tell me it'll be too late so don't tell me it doesn't matter uh, we're gonna move dirksen to center he's listed as a sniper which honestly i'm gonna move him to a two way as well you might disagree that's fine don't care <laughs> i'm doing what i have to do because this team is underperforming on so many levels connor brown Still good enough as a two-way. Max Jones, fine as a grinder, scoring as a grinder. So I won't change him to a power forward. Uh, Liedeker will change to a center. He'll still be the sniper, though. 
So uh, we'll change Oleticker as well. Could I do all of this off screen? Sure I could, but let's be honest. Uh, this is going to be a pretty short series at this point. So why bother? Uh, Taylor Radish has put up points as a power forward. He has. But the physical category isn't amazing. To be honest, you're going to be like, Tookie, what the hell are you doing? I'm going to change Radish to a two-way as well. It kind of fits his attribute layout a little bit better. Uh, David Posternock, currently listed as a sniper, not scoring as such. So let's change Pasta to a playmaker. Let's change him to a playmaker. Why the hell not? Uh, Chris Tierney, of course, going to be perfect as a two-way. Nolan Patrick as a power forward. Good enough? I mean, honestly, you could argue, you know what? I'm going to change Nolan Patrick to a sniper. He'll be the sniper on that line, and Pasta will now be the playmaker. And then top line, Sinitian's good as a sniper. Marner's good as a playmaker. Could argue even as a sniper. And then we have Sprong as the playmaker, but he has also been putting up points uh, this year. So we'll keep those two the same. So I have a couple of things to change there. Yuso Valamaki. Uh, I'm going to change him to a defensive D-man for the moment. Just because offensively, I mean, decent skating, but the puck control is a bit of a concern. And then Phil Crosby. I mean, we have him listed as a two-way. I mean, but he let... I mean, here's the thing. Like, you know, he killed it at the AHL level as a two-way. I'm going to change him to an offensive defenseman. And just try to get him to make the most of that 93 offensive awareness and that unreal skating ability. Uh, so let's do that really quick. We'll go best lines again. And I know we've only played two games in 17 some odd minutes or whatever, guys. But I'm doing what I got to do. I mean, we're down 2 nothing against a goalie that we should be just absolutely destroying. And that hasn't been the case. So Olsen. Olsen moves to a left wing two-way forward. That suits his play style pretty well. Oh, I love seeing that uh, Stanley Cup patch on the jersey. Too bad we're probably not going to be able to see it for that much longer, right? Not at this rate. Oh my god, down 2 nothing already. Uh, left wings, David Posternock will get changed to a playmaker. Now you could say, well, Tugi, why aren't you sending down the other players too? And obviously I don't want to completely screw up their morale. You've kind of seen what's happened to Gabriel Carlson. Just because these players are underperforming doesn't mean that I want to kill their morale because that will also kill their uh, trade value. So we're just going to have them be healthy scratches instead. Lucas Liedeker, man, I know it's your rookie year, but if you could just please step up a little bit, like if you could please step up just a little bit more, and contribute just a little bit more. I would be ecstatic. Uh, Wilson doesn't matter. Oh, so let's see. Right wings will change Dirksen to a center two-way. That works for me. Good old Dirksen. There he is. Warren Dirksen. Change him to a center two-way. Look at that flow. Look at that flow. Unbelievable. So we still got to trade. Uh, not trade, but we still got to change Radish and Patrick. Again, could I do all of this off screen? Probably. But I didn't. So there's that. <laughs> At least you can see that I'm putting in every last ditch effort. Oh, and what goes through my mind in the moment when a team underperforms again? As if, you know, that hasn't... I mean, as if it wasn't enough for that to happen in one series, it has to happen in multiple, I do suppose. Nolan Patrick, our captain, our fearless captain, Nolan, lead us to victory. Damn it. We need your help. Help us, Nolan Patrick. You are our only hope. Uh, Yusuf Alamaki gets changed to a defensive D. Crosby to an offensive. And then we are good. To be honest, I don't even think... It won't even really be worth going with best lines. Because it's just going to put... Colin Wilson, Burakovsky, and Liljegren back in no matter what. So it's not really worth it. Phil Crosby, look at that mustache. It's disgusting. It's a little bit creepy, but damn it, he's a champion. <laughs> Glad to see he has facial hair, much like, uh, you know. Well, I mean, in, in fairness to Sid, he can do a little bit better uh, than that. But there you go. The team is set. Again, so now we have Sinitian, Marner, Sprong, 
Pasternak, Tierney, Patrick, Jones, Lederker, Radish, Olsen, Dirksen, and Connor Brown on defense. Gardner and Yossi still. Volomaki with McDonough. Crosby with Provorov. And then as far as the power play goes, it's it's pretty much good. It's fine. It is what it is. Same with the PK. Let's get this show back on the road. We are in Hartford for game three. Can we make the most of it, or will we be facing one hell of a deficit? And Malcolm Subban needs to get his game together as well. We'll see if he can. First period of game three is scoreless, pretty much even in shots. Not bad. Kind of, you know, stabilize the score a little bit. Keep it a little bit close. Keep it a little bit even. Second period and still scoreless. Dead even and 19 shots apiece. So far, so good from Malcolm. So you know, so far, so good from the you know defensive reinforcements of Valamaki and Crosby. We're looking okay. We just need those big names to step up. Pasternak scores on Ward. Nolan Patrick scores on Ward. Daniel Sprung scores on Cam Ward. Not sure why it's Ward. Don't care because we are ripping him to shreds. Oh my god, what a third period. Four goals from awful angles. Can you play Cam Ward more often? Chris Tierney adds one just for fun. We're not done yet. I don't know what the hell just happened. Five goal third period. Pasternak, Patrick, Sprong, Sinitian, and Tierney. And the Hartford Whalers win on home ice. Three point night for both Patrick and Pasternak. And a 24 save shutout for Malcolm Subban. My main question is, though, aha, so Booth must have been injured. That's the only way, a 688 save percentage for Ward. Booth started the game and was shutting the door. Is he out for a decent amount of time, or is it one of those one-game injuries and then they're fine? That's the question, and we're going to find out an answer to that right now, because, again... I don't know why Calvin or Callum Booth. I was, I think I said Calvin Booth earlier. I don't know why Callum Booth is uh, as good as he is. Um, he was out for just that game, so that's a little bit scary. I wish Cam Ward was back in, but we managed to win. Now it's time for Game Four again in Hartford. The key to victory: Sparta kick Callum Booth in the face and make sure that Cam Ward ends up between the pipes. First period of game four, and it's a goal apiece. Sebastian Ajo and Taylor Radish. He ties it late. Again, though, Cam Ward got beat from awful angles. I don't know what the hell that was about. Second period. I'm a, uh, I'm a little bit nervous, guys. <laughs> Hayden Flurry and Ryan Ellis make it 3-1. Only for Jake Gardner and Daniel Sprong to fight back and tie this game up at 3. 25 shots to 16. All four goals from outside, we are tied, deadlocked at three goals apiece as we begin the third period. We are either going to tie this series up and make it a best of three, essentially, or we are facing a 3-1 deficit. We are halfway through the third period. We need a goal. It is time for those big-name players on the Whalers to step up. Marner, Liedeker, Patrick, Yossi, you can look up and down the lineup. It doesn't matter who. We are going to overtime. Let's get the job done. Do your damn job and win this game. Power play opportunity passes us by. We have to win this game. We have another power play chance and we get the win. Ivan Provorov. <laughs> Ivan Provorov. I had my doubts about you, buddy. Because number one, we didn't even want you. We didn't even want you. We, we didn't bother really negotiating for that long with Cam Fowler. We just said, screw it. We'll go get Provorov. And it worked out there. The overtime game winning goal. Jake Gardner was your first star. A good night as well from Daniel Sprong. It's a 4-3 victory in game four. And we have tied this series again at this point. It is essentially a best of three. We go from being outscored 11 to 4 to outscoring them 9 to 3. The home team has yet to lose, which doesn't bode too well for us as we head back to Carolina for game 5.
but the lineup will stay the same. Although I am very much tempted to change up our power play unit after some of the uh, some of the non conversions. First period of game five, and we get the opening goal. Daniel Sprong is waking up. He and Mitch Marner proving to be a fairly decent combination there. We get that opening goal. Despite being outshot 17 to 6, we have the lead. It's promising. It's promising. Second period. That is not promising. Jordan Eberle and Julian Gauthier. 31 shots to 16. Our offense needs to wake up and start handling their damn business. We are down 2 to 1 as we start the third period here in game 5. Our early power play opportunity is not capitalized on. And we are halfway through the third. We need a goal right now. Power play chance for Carolina. It's an extended power play. We're able to kill it off. Three minutes to go. Have we run out of time? Yes, we have. And Callum Booth with a 28-save victory. 75 overall goalie, folks. And we are down 3-2 to two in this series. I need to see... Jesus Christ, the penalties. Are you serious? Provorov, Valamaki, Provorov, Jones, Valamaki. And then it was a double minor for high sticking on Olsen at the end of the game that really killed our momentum. Right now, discipline is proving, or lack thereof, is proving to be a factor. And you know what? I mean, this could be our last game of the season. I at least have to go through and make whatever changes I possibly can. Our backs are against the wall. The cup is in the building. We no longer have the chance to win the cup at home. But damn it, we can defend home ice and go to Carolina and somehow continue this series. And that is hopefully exactly what we are going to do. Um, so what do we want to do here? You know what, again, Patrick might not be the best center. But we will put him at center uh, with Olsen and Pasternak. And we'll see how that goes. Just because. It's, uh, I don't have a reason for it. Just to try and change things up a little bit with those two units. Game six in Hartford. Our first chance at the cup. It comes down to this. We have to win to force Game 7. Or the Hurricanes will march into Hartford and raise the cup in just a, a nightmare scenario. So let's not have that happen. First period of Game 6, and we get the opening goal. Lucas Liedeker, thank you very much. He gets the opening goal on Booth. We outshot them 12-8, to eight and we were able to take advantage of it. Second Period. Velarde ties it. 22 shots apiece. And that sets up this third period, guys. It all comes down to this. Can we force game seven? Oh, God. Wayne Simmons with the goal. Sebastian Ajo with the goal. Power play opportunity here. We need a goal and we need it quick. And I think that's it, guys. I think that's it. 2.16 to go. And somehow, here, you know what? We'll even put on the alternates. Although I, I do love the away jersey. Uh, but we'll even put on the alternates. <sighs> we are going to lose in six games. Meant to go a CPU game. Barring a miracle comeback at the last minute, we are going to lose in six games to a 75 overall goalie. And I'm honestly trying to keep my composure because when I really think about it, and the more I think about it, that is beyond rage-inducing as you get your first look here at the arena that we have created for the Whalers, or at least you get a half decent look at it. Basically, I just recreated the XL Center. So, you know, nothing too shabby, I do suppose. And unfortunately, oh God. All right, that's not who I thought it was going to go to. Slavin looks to go back around to Velarde. 
Good poke check there. We need the puck, boys. Come on. Gardner's able to win it. Sprong for Gardner. We got a minute and 50 to work. Zachary Sinitian. Cycles back up to the point. Yossi for Sinitian in front for Sprong. Can't get the shot off. Jake Gardner for Sprong. Sinitian. Yossi again. We're working it around. We can't find the shooting lane, though. Jake Gardner winds up and just shoots it right into Jason Zucker. This postseason run... As so we get a good save from Malcolm, I mean, this, this run's going to be defined by underperforming players. And players, oh God, and players simply not getting the job done. That's what it comes down to. Is we had, I mean, just think of the players. I mentioned them earlier, Liljegren, Carlson, Del Zotto, Colin Miller, our big trade deadline acquisition. We kind of went smaller with that. Andre Burakovsky, like this team, ran like a fairly well-oiled machine for the majority of the season, but as the playoffs went on and as players continued to underperform, the, the weaknesses of this team, you know, the cracks in the armor finally began to show. And while it was a miracle season, and while I do think it was worth in a way, Keeping the team the same as we get a couple of shots. What a save by Booth, and this could do it. This could do it. Press him, you idiot. He missed. 55 seconds to go. Valamaki to Marner. Nolan Patrick. It's Marner. He's trying to carry through. Takes the shot. Glove save by Callum Booth. Just so many underperforming players. Uh, that's the weird-ass, like, I, th I forget the name of the mascot. But there you go. That was my recreation of him. We gave him a hat. I don't know why. It's nightmare fuel, I know. We, the first time you guys were to see this venue, it was supposed to be as we were getting ready to celebrate a cup. And now instead, as Marner hits the post, we're going to witness like the worst case scenario for, uh, for a Whaler fan. Like for a real life Whaler fan. And that being watching the Whalers return only to lose to Carolina in the cup final. <laughs> I think that's worst case scenario. There's so many things I liked about this team as we turn the puck over. That's in. We just own goal it. Oh my god. That I mean in real life that's an own goal. That definitely crossed the line, but <sighs> ten seconds. Taylor Radish looking for space. Can't get the pass across. The Carolina Hurricanes. Cal Booth and the Carolina Hurricanes have won the Stanley Cup in six games over the Hartford Whalers. There are, there's just so many layers to the frustration that I just don't know where to begin. We just we have to take a look at this team. And here's the thing, guys. You know, our strategy changed. We went from taking the long road to, you know, taking a detour, essentially a shortcut, by getting Marner, by getting Pasternak. And unfortunately, at least in this scenario, I just, I don't know. I don't want to say our team wasn't well equipped enough because you look at the players we have. It's just we had players underperform at the worst possible time as Victor Rask is apparently the Conn Smythe winner. He did have 25 points, so I can't necessarily disagree with it. <sighs> this is tragic. Like, this is absolutely tragic. The fact that the Carolina Hurricanes are going to be raising the cup above, you know, while standing on the Whalers logo. The, the, the symbolism there. We should have had it. We should have had it. And we threw it away. And now Jordan Stahl 
raises the Stanley Cup at XL Center in Hartford. Hands it to Ryan Ellis first. Oh, God. That is... This is tough to watch. I mean, this is now... Spoiler alert for the Montreal series, if you're not keeping up to date with it. We have yet to win a cup, as you can hear my fucking neighbor coughing outside. I swear to God, that guy. Oh, my God. Like, the lungs on that dude. It's ridiculous. If he sneezes, you could hear it from three states over. It's ridiculous. I mean, he stands right outside my window. I hate the apartment complex setup, but it is what it is. That's right. I don't live in my own house. So it is my own house, but they're all really close together. It's not like condo setup, but it's not like, you know, freaking apartments or like ghetto style apartments. Anyway, anyway, that's, uh, people have been noticing people, you know, like background noises. And that's because I've been recording during the day instead of at night because I've tried to keep a normal schedule like a real person. Doesn't always happen. We have now lost the Stanley Cup final with both Montreal and Hartford. We got there with Montreal in year one. We lost in seven games. We get there with Hartford. We lose in six. But this one might hurt even more. I think this one hurts even more because we just lost to a 75 overall goaltender. And that is further proof that this sim engine does whatever the hell it wants. Which we kind of discovered as the season went along, because that's why we did so well at certain points. And it came back to bite us in the end. Bridgeport wins the Calder Cup. Of course, they eliminated us. The Connecticut Whale in the conference final. And then the Carolina Hurricanes win the Stanley Cup. And we have so many questions that need to be answered over this next offseason that I am not exactly looking forward to it, in all honesty. Malcolm Subban finished with a 930 save percentage. We can't blame him. But the fact that we let a 75 overall goalie go 4-0-1 and finish with a 945 save percentage... I, for anyone who thinks poise rating does anything, by the way, 66 poise, not quite. Let's take a look at the awards, guys, and then that'll do it for this one. Unreal. So Dallas won it in year one, Calgary, Chicago, Pittsburgh, and now in year five, the Carolina Hurricanes... Take home the cup. Steven Stamkos wins the Art Ross as well as the Hart Trophy. Dougie Hamilton wins the Norris. Patrick Kane, the Lady Bing. A dude named Shattenkirk wins the Calder. For Detroit, Victor Rask won the Conn Smythe. Vasilevsky, the Vesna, and the Jennings. The Jennings for the second year in a row. Ian Cole won the Master. Tim Bergeron wins his own award. And Steven Stamkos wins both the Ted Lindsay and the Maurice Rocket Richard Award. Phil Crosby Great season, put up the most points in the AHL as a defenseman. Ellie was the league MVP, though, somehow. Dirksen scored the most goals. Uh, some dude named Jones on Utica was the Rookie of the Year. Crosby won the Eddie Shore Award as best defenseman. I mean, something that Liljegren did for us not too long ago. Stuart Skinner was the Goalie of the Year and also the MVP of the playoffs. <sighs> We just lost in the Stanley Cup Final. And I'm not exactly happy about it. Again, Carlson was a disaster. No points. Minus six in eight appearances. Delzato, minus four. Literally, Delzaster. Valamaki was a minus one in four appearances. Crosby had four points in six games. Uh, Nicholas Hansen didn't do a whole hell of a lot for us. McDonough, eh, Liegren was a disaster. Proveroff. 12 points, but a minus 6. I mean, I don't know what else I was supposed to do. We, we gave so many people so many opportunities. So many opportunities. I mean, Nolan Patrick needed to be a bit better. Pasternak needed to be a bit better. Colin Wilson had 5 points in 22 games. Olsen had 1.4 games. He was a minus 3. Uh, Mitch Marner was 17 points. Liedeker had 9 points. It's not good enough. Burakovsky had 4 points in 19 appearances. 
a nightmare and the luck finally ran out. And the Hartford Whalers have turned back into a pumpkin or whatever the hell happens in that freaking goddamn fairy tale. Guys, I thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed my misery and disappointment, feel free to leave a like and subscribe on the video if you have, or subscribe. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You know what I'm trying to say here. I'm, I'm trying to avoid this mental breakdown. Links to my Twitter and Twitch are in the description. Follow me on there as well if you haven't already. Quick and easy Twitter is good for updates and talking to me about random stuff. And also, you know... Yeah, it's Twitter. I don't need to explain Twitter to you. And Twitch. I mean, it's Twitch. You should come hang out sometime. If you don't. If you do, cool. If you don't, I don't know if you can consider yourself a wild blueberry or not. That's the greatest shame of all. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Take it easy. Sayonara. Arrivederci. Uh, bye. I suppose that one works, right? Just goodbye. Yeah. <laughs>